Um, so I want to talk uh, with you if you would turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping their watch over the flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Um, I don't know who mentioned it this morning that there was some kind of party going on down here last night, 8 till 5 in the morning. I think I heard the music about 4 a.m. I'm like, what is that? But you know, God says joy comes in the morning. And this morning we come and we want to talk about great joy. The verse says there was great joy. The angels came. And they told them, and what was this great joy they came to tell about? It was the good news. The good news of the gospel. Our greatest hope and joy is the message of Christmas. The angels announced a couple things. First, the angels announced a Savior has come. We all need a Savior. In Romans chapter 3, verse 23, it says, For all have sinned. And come short of the glory of God. This verse tells me that I have sinned. It tells me you have sinned. Our whole team that has come, we have all sinned. And this sin really doesn't talk about all of our sins that we do. We all commit sins. I like, you know, tell a lie or I uh, talk behind someone's back or do gossip, right? This is talking about this sin that came into the world by one man. It says in Romans 5, 12, for, wherefore, as by one man, that one man is Adam, sin entered into the world, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. This death, this death that it talks about is um, not just dying in this physical body, but it's dying eternally, eternally being separated from God. So we need a Savior. And the Savior came on the day that Jesus Christ was born. Our Savior. Our Savior came. It is not different than if someone is drowning. They can't save themselves. They need someone to help them and save them. We, too, need someone to save us out of that sin and despair that we are in because of our nature. I used to have a neighbor who used to tell me when her children were nine, they're born sinners. They are. We are all born sinners. We don't get into this because we want to or because it's our desire to be sinners. We are born sinners. Like you might inherit your mother's eyes or your father's color skin or hair color. We inherit from Adam, the first man, we inherit sin. And because of that sin, we cannot save ourselves. We needed a Savior. So the good news on that day was a Savior has come. He's come for you. He's come for you. So what is he going to save us from? The price of sin. There's a price to be paid for sin. Our relationship with God has been broken. And there's a penalty. And that penalty is death. In Romans 6.23, if you want to turn to that, you can. Maybe this is a verse you already know by heart. And in Romans 6.23 it says, For the wages of sin is death. It's death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We know that wages mean we work a day and we get paid for a day. Whatever we do, we get a reward. It's our reward or our payment or our wages, right? This verse tells us that our wages are death. Death because we're sinners. And that death isn't talking about just dying in this physical body. We are made like God. We are three in one. We have a physical body. We have a soul. We have a spirit. And this death it talks about is our 
eternal separation from God. When you, you are eternally separated from God, that's the penalty if you don't accept Christ. Somebody had to pay that price. And the person who paid that price, I love the second part of this verse because the second part is the best. It says, but. After that but, it says, but there is a gift. You know, it's just like at Christmas. I don't know what it's like here in Jamaica, but at home our kids can't wait to see all the presents under the tree. And there's that anticipation that you're going to gift. And um, it's not something they have to work for. They didn't do anything to get it. It's just a present under the tree. They didn't have to have a job and go to work. Their parents did. Their parents paid the price for the present, right? And it's under there. And that present's there for them. It's always been there under the tree, wrapped for them, right? But that present isn't theirs. So they go and they just open that present up. Then it's theirs, right? Jesus Christ is there for you. He's your gift for you. You just have to open up his gift and take it. He rescues us from the power of sin. The Holy Spirit, Spirit comes to live in us. He makes us alive from within and changes us from within. And that power of sin can be broken through the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5.17, if you want to turn there, we can turn in our Bibles. 2 Corinthians verse, chapter 5, verse 17. For those that you brought your Bibles with you. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Creature, Old things are passed away. That's right. Behold, things are become new. We are a new creature. A new creature in Christ. So the power of sin can be broken. Amen. The presence of sin. The presence of sin continues even after we... Except Christ is our Savior, the presence of sin is there. We are, um, a phrase I learned from childhood is that I'm a sinner saved by grace. I'm still, I'm still a sinner, right? I'm going to stand in this physical body. I'm going to be tempted by God, but God says that he, you will not be tempted, but there's a way of escape. But he gives you that way of escape. And we get that because we have the Holy Spirit. I sometimes say, I think the Holy Spirit is like your mama. You know, your mama's back there saying, don't do that. And you, you hear this little voice in your head that says, don't be doing that. You shouldn't be doing that. Don't be going with those people. And that's kind of the Holy Spirit. You know, he's kind of that mother's voice saying to you and, and helps you find your way to escape. This is um, good news of great joy. The other thing the angel said is that he is the Messiah. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. At the time when Christ was born, the Jewish people, they were looking for the Messiah. They were waiting for the Messiah. And they thought that that Messiah was going to conquer the world and be their king. And that's why David, or that's why Herod, had all the babies killed under the age of two. Right? Because he thought, this is going to be a king. This is someone who's going to take over my reign. Because the people of Israel, this is going to be our king. He's going to be the Messiah. Everyone in Israel knew that. What is the Lord? If you look at the word Lord throughout time, it usually means someone who commands power over the people. They're a powerful person in Scripture. The word Lord is used as a person of deity who has authority, control, or power over others. A master, a chief, a ruler. Well, Jesus Christ is a ruler. Jesus Christ is a, is a Lord. He is Lord over this world. He is Lord over Satan. He is Lord over the things of this world. And he comes, he can be your Lord. And he can guide you through life. Matthew 28, 18. Jesus is talking with his followers before he ascends into heaven. He says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. He has the authority. He has the authority to come over and rule in your life and be that Lord in your life. We have to remind ourselves every day. I have to remind myself every day. Who is Lord of my life? Who is in charge? You know, just coming on this mission trip was a chance for me to say, who is Lord of my life? Because, um, you know, it's, it, it, it's not that easy for me to come. I had to raise some money. And thank goodness we have a very giving church, and we were able to raise our money to come. As a matter of fact, last Sunday we said to them, um, yep, yeah, we're going to have to buy some paint and the money. They all donated. They're wonderful people. Praise Praise Lord. Lord. 
But it was, it was a sacrifice for me to step out of my comfort zone and say, can I do this? Can I go? Can I take off work? Can I step out on faith to come here? It reminds me of um, some Bible studies that Suzette wrote up for us to and, um, look at every day. Remind me that, what am I going to do here? You know, it, it needs to be more than just about coming here to serve. I mean, I need, what can God do in me this week? What can God change in my life this week? Okay? So some of that is just the fact of going on a missions trip for us, is stepping out of our comfort zone, and seeing the hand of God work in our lives. Seeing Him provide for my money for my trip, provide for finances at home while I'm gone, and take care of my family while uh, that would be funny. <laughs> but God is the Lord of our lives. He's the supreme Lord over all lords. Religions around the world have many, many gods. But Jesus is the one true and living God. He is the Lord of lords, and all others shall bow down to him. Jesus tells us, you shall have no other gods beside me. He is Christ the Lord. We serve a Lord who knows what is going to happen, and he just wants us to follow him and give our life to him and give our burdens to him. Our pastor had a great story last Sunday. He said his daughter came to him and said, Daddy, I'm, you know, I'm home from college, and I, I've been working a lot, and they want me to work some more hours, and, you know, I don't know, should I not? Should I say I don't want to work these hours? And she just was bringing to her father her burden. What do I do, Dad? What do I do? And he said, I think you should go work. <laughs> you know, he, and he says, I don't really know if I was making the right decision, but it just sounded like the right thing. Just go to work, honey. Just go to work. And she had a great day, she got great tips, it just came out really good. But she was just relieved that she didn't have to make a decision. You know, our Heavenly Father yes. is up there. And he's saying, just bring to me your burdens. Amen. Let me make the decisions for you. Amen. Sometimes I'm like, do you, do you ever get busy in your life? I'm like, I can do this, right? I can conquer the world. I can make all the decisions by myself. And you forget that God's there that says, I'm your Father, you come to me. Just ask me, what do you want me to do? Just make those decisions. So we need to remember that he is the Messiah. He is the Lord of our lives. So every day, we have to remind ourselves he's Lord of our lives. And keep doing that. If we just follow him and do what he wants, he will take care of us. Can you say a prayer? Thank you.